Hello there. I am Pat Willie, the founder and CEO of the ministry, The Gathering, when women gather, when women worship. Thanks for listening in tonight. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. I pray that the word of God will bless you. It will be straight for you and that it will transform your life. All right, let's get started in the word of God. Again, thanks for joining me. So welcome all of you. This is The Gathering. And when women gather, when women worship, I'm Pat Willie. I'm here in Dallas, Texas. Thank you guys for being on tonight. For those of you that are on the Zoom call, as well as, as on the teleconference tonight, thank you for being a part of our meeting tonight. Again, this is the gathering, when women gather, when women worship. And so we are a group of ladies that uh, meet each Thursday night from across the United States for our time of Bible study and a time of prayer and worship. And we are committed to live our best lives. We are committed to living godly, fulfilled lives. And yes, and it is our mission to form authentic relationships with God and with others, to experience freedom and deliverance in our lives, to identify our callings and our giftings, as well as, yes, experience freedom in our lives in order that we may tell our stories and impact the world. Again, we're committed to living godly, fulfilled lives. So I have a couple of announcements tonight. I'm excited about some things that are going on in the ministry. I want to make sure that we get those and get those out of the way. So the first announcement is that the prayer clinic is resuming. Again, the second cohort for the prayer clinic is starting September 16th and September 23rd. And for you that were part of the first clinic, it really was a blessing for all of us. We left the clinic with some new ways and some new methods in prayer and learning to pray more efficiently. And so God blessed us in the prayer clinic and really it was a blessing to all of us. So cohort number two starts September 16th and the 23rd. If you're interested in the prayer clinic, go to my website, patwillieministries.org, patwillieministries dot org and sign up for the prayer clinic. And then I'm equally excited about the Gathering Host Summit. The 2023 Gathering Host Summit is being held this year in Tampa, Florida. And it's October the 6th and the 7th there in Tampa. We have a wonderful speaker, Dr. Julian Thomas. is coming from Maryland and he's going to bless our hearts. We have an amazing praise and worship leader and Dr. not Dr. Lady Katrina Cartwright is coming from Denver, Colorado. I'm expecting God to move in a powerful way. And many of you have already signed up. If you haven't signed up or you haven't registered, go to my website, patwillieministries.org and register for the the summit. Yes the host summit for 2023. And then I need you guys, if you are planning on going, to go ahead and register for your room. On that same site is a button that says, register for your room, or book your room. And the importance of that is, we got the rooms at a very discounted price. And so the rooms were over 200 and some dollars a night. I wanna say somewhere, near $220 a night. And if you book before September 15th, the rooms are $169 per night. And so you want to get in on that discounted price. You want to get in on that conference price. So the conference itself is free. The, I call it conference, but it's the summit. The summit is free. However, you must pay for your room. So we're excited about all of you that is that are coming. I encourage all of you that if you want to come, 
go ahead and get your ticket, get your room, and meet up in Tampa, Florida for the 2023-2023 Gathering Host Summit. Well, we'll be meeting there. What a great time. We have a great weekend planned for all of you. We have some fun things planned, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So we thank God for each of you being on tonight. We have a very special guest that's on tonight. We've had some audio problems, but we're praying that God works those out. Ashley Jimerson is a phenomenal saxophone player, and she has a very powerful testimony of God's healing and God's restoration. And so Ashley hails from Los Angeles, California, had an opportunity to meet her about three or four years ago, and she really blessed our hearts in an instrumental worship. And this girl is anointed to play the sax. So without further ado, we're going to turn it over to Miss Ashley Jimerson. She's going to play for you as well as give you her testimony. Ashley, go ahead. I sincerely apologize that for the tech issues. I was definitely looking forward to playing for you all today. But I'll, I'll get straight into this. Um, my testimony. Um, so I'm going to kind of go back to you know, 2017. I was roughly about 26, 27. And at the time, I was feeling like a, kind of like a lump in my chest. And I thought it was a little weird, but, you know, I didn't really think of anything of it. I kind of was going on about my regular everyday life. And so the something said, you know, Go get it checked out, you know, you know, may not be something, it may not be anything, you know, maybe something. And so I went to the doctor and I'm just kind of you know, just around and she's like, Well, she's like, That's yeah, cool, a little weird, but she's like, Well send you to a specialist and next thing I know I'm getting thrown into all these different doctors' appointments, doing doing different scans, mammograms, biopsies and so after all of the appointments it looks like you have what they call what they call the cancer, so they call it And um, so they said we're well, going to set you up for surgery, you know, get it removed, and then they'll do. And so after they had removed that, you know, then it came to a point that, you know, with the follow-up appointment, they said, well, it looks like we've got mostly everything out, but because of your age, you know, they kind of wanted to be even more aggressive. And they're like, well, we're recommending doing a full mastectomy and all these different things. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. I, 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 I don't want to do all that. <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm so young and I, I, I just thought that it was so extreme at the time. And this part of this part of my story, I, 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 I've only recently started telling this side because it's really important for us as women to become as knowledgeable as we can when it comes to our health. At the time, not having too much guidance or a direction as to what I wanted my next steps to be, I just said, well, you know, they removed everything, I'll be okay. And, and then I just walked away. And that was probably one of the worst decisions that I could have made. But also, it was still a blessing to the So here we go. Two, days, two years later, you know, I'm still in this event. Sharp pain the same place that I had the surgery. And so I said, well, it's like my doctor for a month. And so went to the doctor. Of course, we're back in the same booth, biopsy, mammogram, so on and so forth. And at this point, now we're not even to cancer. We're safe. And so we had another surgery, but the one thing that I did do this time around that I did not do the first time around was get a second opinion. And so with that second opinion, they said, well, we don't have to risk everything, but, you know, once we pull the math out and, you know, do the testing on it, then we can kind of figure out what the next steps are. And at the time, I'm just, Kind of in my head, I'm like, God, why? Why? Why, why did this have to be me at this time? 
because this is not something that I want to deal with. I just, you know, I feel like I'm just starting my life. I just got engaged and married. And, you know, I felt like I'm finally moving forward and then just like taking one to get back. And so once they did the testing, they said, well, it looks like we got most of everything and it didn't spread any further than the actual just breath. So I said, okay, well, that's the really but because it was so aggressive and returned within that two years, you know, the next step was chemotherapy and radiation. So during the whole time that I'm going through chemotherapy and subsequently radiation, that was the time that I actually started to get a much closer walk with God. Because it's one thing to be a musician in the church and grow up in the church. But it's another thing to be really into your word and really seeking God and knowing God for yourself. Because as a musician, and, and I can't speak for all of them, but there's a lot of musicians, because I'm one of them, that, you know, you go to church on Sunday and, you know, you bring the Bible and once Sunday is over, everything gets put to the side and you don't look at it again until either you have to go to Bible study or if you show up again to church on Sunday. But I had to realize that God wanted more than just a one day a week action. It needed to be a seven day, 24 hour day kind of action. And so at the time while I, I'm down and, you know, dealing with neuropathy and, you know, not being able to fill certain limbs in my body, going through the chemotherapy, those were the times that I opened up my word. My, my one scripture that I always came back to was Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And I, and I hope that I'm going to it. And it says, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And that just kept playing over and over my mind. Every time I went to a chemotherapy session, every time I went to radiation, it just played it over. Because it, it, it helped so true to say that no matter what you go through, that it's for your good. And the reason why I felt like I had to step down for those moments and felt, well, really, honestly, it was more almost like a half a year going through all of the treatment, was because I had to learn how to take care of my temple. God gave me one body, and I only have one body that is my responsibility to pay attention to what I'm putting into my body, whether that's the food that I eat, whether those are the things that I watch on television, the, the books that I read, the words that, that are spoken to me from other people, or the words that I speak to others. It was very important that I learned how to take care of myself. Because for many years, I'm living this college life, you know, I'm eating whatever I want to eat, I'm doing what I want to do and enjoying life, but God has something so much greater for me than what I was doing. And so, now that I'm on the other side of the fence of that, I'm now three years cancer free. Praise God. And I've learned more than anything, that life is so precious, and every single morning that we wake up, it is a chance to thank God. It is a chance to do right for yourself and to do right for um, And I'm just grateful that I have the chance to experience it. What would be like, why would you be grateful to experience it? You know, and you ask why me, well, why not? Because then you can be then a testimony for someone else who's going through the same thing. And I feel like that over the course of these last couple of years, God has been sending people to me who are going through the same thing. Some people who are younger than when I first had breast cancer. And being able to pour into them and give them the encouragement that I wish that I had during my battle with cancer makes all the difference. And aside from that, the other thing that came out of going through my battle with cancer 
was I spent a lot of years doing things that was I wasn't called. I was good at them, but I wasn't called gay. And what I specifically speak to is I especially this working with that I'm not to say that it just makes me wrong with that. But God called me to be doing something other than that. And so when we came up to the pandemic, this is of course you coming out of you know, finishing treatment, all that jazz. You know, I was, you know, went not back to work, you know, kind of beginning the normal rotation of things. And I had not made a job. The job I've been working for um, pretty much since I graduated college. And it was a scary time, especially going into the pandemic. You don't know what's going to come of it. You know, you don't know what's going on in the world. We're just kind of taking it a day at a time. And at that moment, God said, do you trust me? Do you trust that I am your provider? Do you trust that I give you everything that you need? And at that moment, I said, well, I don't have a choice. I have to trust you. And God is not a man that will ever lie. So it says that he provides all of our needs. That's exactly what he's going to do. And so I trusted God, and throughout the pandemic, somehow, I, I can't even explain how I was thinking financially because to me, it just it blows my mind every time. It makes me feel sick. And so once things started to open up, I said, okay, now I want you to go out and play music. So my husband and I, we went down and we sat down. I and I, I was living in Los Angeles, but now I live in the Oakland Bay area. We went and sat down at Jack Money Square, and he said, "Just start playing music." And so, I was playing a mixture of music. I played gospel music, Christian music. I played, you know, a couple covers in here and there. And it was like as if the Lord just started bringing people towards me. They just started dropping in. I wasn't expecting it. And even this lady came up and she gave my husband a hundred dollar bill and she said, This is for you guys. I want to be a blessing to you. And when we got home and we, we counted up how much was in that case, my mind was blown because I said, Really, Lord? This 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 is something that could potentially sustain financially and he says do my will, and I will provide. So, ever since then, I've been playing music full time, and it's been an absolute blessing. Never in my mind would I ever imagine that this would be a life that I'm living, and God continues to just blow my mind. And even with every checkup scan that I have to do, because I still get my monthly scan really twice a year. And that it comes back clear. And I just know that every time that I do what God says, everything turns out the way that it's supposed to. And so I just say all that to say, trust God. And if you don't know what your calling is, seek God. And if you don't know what your next steps are, call on God, because even if it takes him a day, 24 hours, a week, a month, if you're patient enough and just wait on his voice, he will tell you everything that you need to do. He will send for your direction to be able to give you the resources that you need, whatever it is. I just praise God. Honestly, I I'm just full of joy. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm just full of joy, and I'm just absolutely blown away every day. And so I just wake up with gratitude and just grateful that I get to serve a God who never fails and that always comes through. And He is absolutely my Heavenly Father that I I absolutely adore. And so really, that's pretty much my testimony. That's my story. And, and that, and that, yeah, and... Yeah, that's a beautiful story. So actually, 
How old were you when you diagnosed with cancer, with breast cancer? Um, so the first time around, which was pre-cancer, I was uh, about uh, 27. 27. And then um, the second time around, when it was stage one, I was going on, going on third. Third. So it's not like two, three years after the fact. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for for both, and I know even from my um, oncologist, you know, they'll they'll even tell you like you know they'll they'll give stuff to people, but not very often with breast cancer. But the number has been trending upward mm-hmm. over the last, I would say, probably like five to ten years. Mm-hmm. And so I think the beautiful thing was that it was caught earlier on rather than yeah. Yes, amen. And yes, and to have to go through that at any age, you understand, it takes the Lord and faith to be able to sustain you doing those things. And and yeah, so we we thank God for you, that he brought you on, on the other side of that. And, and you're healed and you're restored and, and you are now, you understand, in the Lord's business doing what God has called you to do full time. That's a beautiful Beautiful story, so encouraging to all of us to know that, yes, somebody said years ago, the safest place that I know is in the will of God, and yes, and the most peaceful place that we know is in the will of God. So thank you for telling your testimony, and it was a blessing to us, and certainly you know, we are encouraged to go, yeah, and to follow God and and to be faithful in the things that he has called each and every one of us to do as well. So your testimony is very encouraging. And, and yeah, I was looking at the comments there. And so, yes, very, very encouraging of how God can sustain us through all the phases of our lives, through every season. God is faithful, and he promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he promised to guide us and to, yes, if we would trust in him yes. with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, acknowledge him in all our ways, and he yes. shall direct our path. Yes. So thank you thank for sharing your story. And that's what the gathering is all about. We're a group of women who, mm-hmm. as I said from the beginning, have found freedom, experience deliver telling our story to make an impact in a world because it is the word of our testimonies that we gain victory and overcome. So thank you for being on tonight with us. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Don't worry about that. Things happen, okay? Yes, your story is beautiful. We praise God for your life and for the things that he will do for you and through you we pray that even more doors, even greater doors, and greater opportunities for you to share your gift with the world mm-hmm. yeah, and to share your story being such a young lady and how God brought you on the other side of it and then you're experiencing the victory. It's wonderful. We thank God for you. We praise God for your life, Ashley. Go and do great things for the Lord. Yes, and that yes. is going to conclude our time together tonight. But I don't want to close without praying for all of you tonight. Thank you, Ashley, for sharing your story again. Thank you, guys, for that are on the teleconference. Thank you for those of you that are on the Zoom. Let's take a minute to pray, and we will be finished. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. We worship your name. For your name is holy. Yes. You are our God, our Lord, and our Savior. Mm. And we honor you for your goodness yes. and your mercy Thank you, Father. and your favor in our lives. Mm. How we praise you and we worship you for Every woman that's on the call tonight, part of the Zoom, how you have blessed their lives, how you have empowered them 
how you have strengthened them, how you've given them a testimony of what it means to walk with you. Yes. And to walk, yes, your, in through your word. We give you glory for it. We give you praise. We thank you, God, for the beautiful testimony of Ashley. And, God, we pray that even more favor would be upon her life in the name of Jesus, that you would open supernatural doors for her in Jesus' name as she honors you in everything that she does, in her story, in her talent. God, in the name of Jesus, in her gifting, as she honors you in that. God, we pray for amazing doors to be open for her in Jesus' name. And we give you glory and we give you praise, not only for Ashley, God, but for every woman that's on the call tonight. We pray your choices, blessings over their lives in the name of Jesus, over the lives of their over the lives of their families in the name of Jesus. We pray your peace. Yes, God, we pray your provision in Jesus' name. We give you glory for it, and we give you praise. Glory be to God that you're moving in their homes. You're moving upon their relationships. You're moving upon their children. And, God, you are doing something extraordinary. You're blowing our mind. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Thank you. That you always make a way. Yeah, Lord, you always provide. You are Jehovah Jireh, the one that provides. We give you glory for it. We give you praise. Now bless us, God, as we go through the week in the name of Jesus into the weekend. We pray your protection upon us. We pray your protection upon our family members, upon our children and upon our grandchildren. And we give you glory and praise. Glory be to God that every need is met in Jesus' name. Every need is met in Jesus' name. Every need, oh, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For your word says, and my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that every need is met now in Jesus' name. Favor. Oh, it's what I heard. Favor upon all glory be to God. Upon every lady in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. We give you glory. We give you praise for every open door, every divine connection. Yes, God. Every divine appointment. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Hello there. This is Pat Willie again. Thanks for listening in to this week's Bible's lesson. I know you were blessed by the word as I was. Join us again next week as we gather to learn more about the word of God. Blessings now. Have a blessed week. In Jesus' name. Amen.